receive you in this virtual format as we lift praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we offer up to him our best worship on today. I'm excited about service. We have a special service this morning uh, honoring our graduates here at Plum Grove Baptist Church for 2020. And I'm excited about the word today as we continue in our series from the Psalms of Ascent, the Psalms of Ascent from the Book of Psalms. First and foremost, though, let us bind together in our hearts and minds, uh, draw in the reins of our hearts and minds together for our call to worship and prepare to worship the Lord this morning. Our call to worship this morning is going to be com is coming from the book of Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th through the 20th verse. Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th through the 20th verses. Hear ye the word of the Lord this morning. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So, this morning, as we listen to the words of Ephesians this morning, it is my prayer that during this service, during this time together that we have, and especially for our graduates this morning, that they will come to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. There are a lot of things that we can get from textbooks. There are some amazing things and resources that we can get from the teachers and those who teach us in our lives. But there is nothing that ever will surpass knowing, feeling, and understanding the love of Christ for ourselves. So with that in mind today, as I said, it is my prayer that throughout this service that the words that are spoken, the prayers that are prayed, and the word that is proclaimed today would help us to know even more the love of Christ that he has for us that surpasses knowledge. At this time, let us welcome our brother Deacon Green as he comes to lead us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we come before you today thanking you for another beautiful day. This is a day that you've made. We're so glad in it, Father. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for your grace and mercy. You are a good and loving God. It's because of your love for us that we faithfully lean on you today, God. We come to you this morning praying for the sick and the infirm. Your word declares that by the stripes that Jesus bore, we are healed and made whole. Bless them, dear God, in Jesus' name. We pray for the lonely and those who are bereaved. Comfort them in a way that only you can, God. God, these are some difficult times that we're facing. As cities and states and countries open up, we know that it's not over. But you, God, yes, yes. you, great God, yes. are the beginning and forever and ever and ever. As we go through this, this pandemic, as we go through this troubled time, we remember your absolute tenderness, God. We remember your love for us. Even during this chaos, you are so close that I can feel you in my heart. I can feel you here in my heart. It's out of our heart, Father, that we cry out for our nation and for this world. Hear us, O Lord. Heal this land, dear God. Father, on this day, we have trouble among our youth. We lift up our youth to you, God, today. Yes, God. We ask you to touch those who are misdirected, yes. who are troubled. Give them your, just gird them, God. Yes, yes. Give them your full arm that they may be able to stand against the, the temptations of evil that is coming. 
causing so many of them to run their lives and their life to end prematurely. Gird them, Father, with your truth that they may walk in peace and serenity. God, put your word upon their heart. Hide it within their soul. God, we are so thankful and so grateful for the graduates that you have bestowed with us today. Father, we ask you for a special blessing upon them as they start this new chapter in their lives. Be their guide, Father. Go with them whatever they do. Let them remember that there is no greater success than being in your will, dear God. And Father, as your appointed servant come to deliver the word to us, let our ears be open yes, yes. and our hearts be fertile yes. that your word may grow out yes. in this community, in this world, from each one of us that has heard your word. God, let our light so shine that you are edified in this world. Yes. Father, bless Pastor Gardner new as he comes. Be with him, Father. Strengthen him. And be with us, Father, even after this hour has passed. Father, we love you. We thank you. We glorify you. It is to your power, your might, and your tender love that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
are just excited uh, and we are delighted to see the faithfulness of the members in continuing to be faithful to give in their tithes and offering. Let us continue to do what God has called us to do and he will continue to bless us. Amen? Amen. At this time, we are going to uh, recognize our 2020 graduates and Pastor Gardner is going to come with a special introductory message for them. Good morning, Plum Grove. Good morning to all of our e-visitors, those of you watching by Facebook, YouTube. We thank the Lord for you and your presence. I have come to uh, recognize our 2020 graduates. This is always a special time for the Plum Grove Baptist Church family and personally for me as a pastor in that many of the, the graduates that have uh, graduated recently I've had the opportunity to see them grow from little boys and girls. Most of them I've had the pleasure of baptizing and seeing them grow in their faith. It's also exciting for us as a church family because here at Plum, Plum Road, we have an investment into our graduates. We are a church uh, that believes in investing in every child, uh, in every way, and in every avenue that God leads them. And so it's especially a dear time for us as we invested in these uh, young ladies financially, mostly spiritually, and their families. So to see them matriculate for 12 years, to see them uh, in their might and power flourishing, uh, to see and experience their great achievement is a delight to say the least. And I'm excited for Haley Bostic. She's a graduate of Simpson Valley. Uh, it's been a pleasure being the, her pastor, uh, her family's pastor, seeing her grow, her beautiful voice sing, her athleticism. It's been a pleasure, a great pastoral pleasure, to see Haley prosper. And I know, Haley, that the best is yet to come. But also, Beyonce Williams. Uh, Beyonce uh, uh, is, is a multi-talented young lady, uh, an athlete, but she is uh, as smart as you will ever see any young person. It's been a joy seeing Beyonce grow, flourish, uh, and blossom into the young lady that she is now. And I say to you, Beyonce, eyes have not seen is and not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for you. We also have a college graduate, Karina Valeria. Uh, Karina couldn't be with us today, but she is a fierce activist, a lover of God, a lover of his people, and we're so grateful and glad to see what God has done in her life and what God will continue to do in her life. I'm excited because uh, if you are remotely socially conscious. This is a the prime time for women of color, uh, black women, brown women, to exercise their power, to stake their claim, and to make an indelible impression on this earth. We love our uh, brown skinned girls. Uh, we love their power. Uh, we want to push them to the fore. We want to take the shackles off. We want to support them. We want to follow them. We want them to lead us. We want to hear their voice. And that's why I'm especially grateful that this year, 2020, we have three brown-skinned girls that are going to be powerful leaders in their state, in their nation, and most likely our world. We're also grateful because, as many of you know, this year, 2020, has been a very tumultuous time for uh, students all over, but graduates uh, mostly. Many of them thought that they would have to forego and forfeit uh, the moment that they've been waiting mostly for, and that is to walk across that stage to receive that degree or that diploma. We want to do all we can to make sure that this year is special, just as special for them as it has been for others in previous years. And I say to you ladies that even though maybe tra the traditional celebrations of graduation and commencement were not yours to have, 
but we know that our God is faithful and he will restore, he will bless you with double. You've not lost anything. This pandemic and indeed the cancellation of some of the celebrations that you look forward to have, uh, it didn't catch God by surprise. All things work together for good. And so we love you, we are very proud of you, and we look forward to seeing what God is going to do in your life in the future. With that, uh, Reverend Savage is going to come and tell us a little bit about our graduates, starting with Haley Boston. Please give attention to the wonderful exploits of these three women. next I read this morning is Ms. Beyonce Williams. Beyonce Williams is a graduate of Hale County High School. She has finished school with a 3.5 GPA and is ranked number 12 in her class. Not only did she achieve all A on a row, she has had the opportunity to participate in UAB Early College for three years and has accomplished the goal of 18 credit hours during that time. She's been a part of the Varsity Girls basketball team for three years. Her senior year this past year, she was awarded Area Tournament MVP and Regional All-Tournament Team. Beyonce has already enlisted in the Army and plans on becoming a military policeman. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Beyonce Williams. Ms. Corina Villarreal. 
Unfortunately, Karina could not be with her to be here with us today, but we would still like to honor her and read off a list of our accomplishments this morning. Karina Villarreal is graduating with a BA in public relations and returning to the University of Alabama to pursue a master's in social work. During her undergraduate career at the University of Alabama, she served as president of the Hispanic Latino Association, director of multicultural affairs in the Student Government Association, director of special projects for Vote Every Radio Way, and was a member of the prestigious Blackburn Institute. We are extremely proud of Karina and all of her accomplishments at the University of Alabama. Before we conclude this portion of our service this morning, I would like to offer, offer just a quick word of prayer for these three women who would want to pray. Uh, and I encourage you to pray as I pray as well, uh, that God will continue to cover them uh, and that all that they do will be for the glory of the Lord as they move forward in their lives. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this celebratory time in the life of these women, not only in the life of these three young ladies, but in the life of this church. Father God, you have shown yourself mighty and faithful by seeing these women to this very day and to these accomplishments. We see through them in their graduation and their matriculation how you are a God who sustains, how you are a God who provides, and how you are a God who protects. You have made sure by your powerful hand that they had all the grace and mercy necessary to accomplish all that they have up until this point. And so God, we would be remiss if we don't first and foremost say thank you this morning. We thank you for Beyonce Williams. We thank you for Haley Boston. And we thank you Karina Villarreal. We thank you for their lives and their accomplishments and all that you have granted their hands to accomplish in their academic studies and their civic duties and Father God, the ways that they have blessed us here at Plum Grove Baptist Church. Father God, as they move into the next chapters and phases of their lives, we pray that your hand of protection will continually be upon them. We ask that you are blessed to going out and they're coming in we pray, God, according to your word, that they will be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, that they will be lenders and not borrowers, and Father God, that they will be purveyors of justice, and that they will be the ones that others might run to asking, what must I do to be saved? Allow their light to continue to shine brightly as they depart from their homes, uh, as they depart from their comfortable spaces and their familiar places. Father God, we pray that they will never feel far off from your love. We pray that each uh, task and each day moving forward in the next chapters of their lives, that they will come to know even more the power of your word and the loving comfort of your presence. Father God, help us to be mindful as a church community that just because they are moving on, Father God, that they are not to be forgotten. Help us to be innovative in the ways that we continue to support them to love them and to nurture them into discipleship to look more like you. Father God, if there be any needs right now during this transition to the next phase of their life, I pray right now that all of their needs will be met according to your riches and glory. Father God, make, Father God, make provision for smooth transitions into the next phases of life. And Lord, we pray that the words of their mouth and the meditations of their hearts would be acceptable unto your sight. And that all that you have placed within them will come to fruition. Not for their applause, Father God. Not for um, so that their name could be made great. But Father God, so that you can get the glory out of their lives. Father God, we just thank you again on today. We thank you for the opportunity to celebrate these women and their families and the sacrifices that they have made. And Father God, we thank you for your word and for Christian community. Yes. who gives us a bond as strong as this. Bless these women as they go forth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our public reading of Scripture. We're blessed this morning to have Sister Darren Lewis, who is going to come at this time and lead us in our public reading of God's Word. Let's bless God for her as she comes. 
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, I'm going to be reading a scripture from Psalms 123, and I'm going to give you guys a second to find that in your own books at home. Amen. While y'all finding that, I miss you guys, and I pray that y'all are blessed. Amen. It reads, To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. This is the word of the Lord. church family and all those watching on social media. Today I'll be doing a reading. The Crime of Living Cautiously, Hearing God's Call to Adventure by Lucy Shaw. Because ignorance is often considered bliss, it seems better not to know bad news so that in the moment, we won't have to acknowledge or be troubled by it. Too many of us guard ourselves from potentially painful truth. I have friends whose physical symptoms seem to demand medical attention, but for fear of dismal diagnosis, they stay away from the doctor's office. In that case, the risk of ignorance, the worsening of untreated disease, is more painful in the end than the risk of learning the truth, for which they are may well be remedies. Every hour we walk into unknown territory, sometimes threatening to our faith as the den of lions in which Daniel was incarcerated because he took the risk of praying openly to the God he worshiped and obeyed. For some, it may even mean moving into a wilderness of the spirit where doubts and despairs besiege us as fiercely as Jesus was besieged at the moment, at the beginning, of his public ministry. I have been there where the particulars of my circumstances and the demon of depression have seemed to press down with paralyzing fear, causing a wave of skepticism about God's love and care to engulf me. I've learned from experience that in such a time, I'm being called upon to wait. And in the waiting, God will send me the gifts of his presence again. I learn a lot as I wait, and my watchword in this unknown and fearful territory is continue to be faithful and obedient. In creative work, another area that leads me into the unknown, I follow language. I am the servant of the words given me, a calling in which trust is a significant element. My faith is in the Holy Spirit that the work that results from following the vision even into a valley of shadows, will reflect reality. After all, the Spirit has promised to guide me into truth, to shepherd me through the direst circumstances to his house of feasting. My best insurance is the heavenly policy that assures me, along with Julian Norwick, that all manner of faith shall be well. Thank you. Be glorified even in this preaching moment. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in. We do, as you know, we have a few people here, I guess about 10 people, and I just thank God for them. We are still in this uh, space of um, uh, not only social distancing, but the building, as it were, is still closed um, as we uh, monitor the situation in our city, in our state, our world, and that is the situation of COVID-19. It is my utmost concern, uh, your health, your well-being is my utmost concern. I'm not in a hurry to put anybody in harm's way. Amen. I'm not in a hurry to uh, bring you back in here to put your, your health at risk. And so I behoove you this is just some pastoral observations to uh, remain vigilant. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that there are people out there that seem like they have a point to prove without any regard for anybody's lives, including their own. Don't fall into that trap. Don't be one of those persons. Don't be affected by them. So when you go out, continue to wash your hands, watch what you touch. Don't get too relaxed. Uh, wear a mask, uh, if not for your good, for the good of those who will pass by you. In the end time, when the Lord says so, we will be back in this holy place uh, together corporately worshiping our Lord again. So until that time, let's check on one another, let's minister to one another. Uh, I, uh, at the risk of sounding redundant because I know you've heard it. The building is closed, but the church never closed. Yes. The church is open, only the building is closed. So we are the church, and this pandemic has not prevented us, and hindered us from loving one another, ministering to one another, uh, helping one another, and preaching the word of God. So the work of the Lord goes on. I love the way Paul said it. The word of the Lord is not bound. Right. Amen. Amen. I thank you, Darren, for reading Psalms 123. We are continue, we will continue our uh, series, preaching series, and learning series in the Psalms of the Ascent. This is the fourth Psalm of the, the Ascent. And uh, we were just blessed richly by uh, Reverend Savage on last week as he uh, preached our hearts happy and when he preached Psalm 122 uh, that, that word is still resonating in my spirit and I pray and hope that you will become so familiar with the content, the meat of that message that you encourage yourself so we thank God for the presence and the proficiency of Reverend Corey Savage today uh, this series takes us to Psalms 123 we chose the, this song, this series, because we are in a period of human history that no person living has ever tried. So no one has been in this space before trying to navigate and choreograph uh, life in the midst of a pandemic. It's, it's surprising, it's unpredictable, uh, the unknown is always before us. And whether you know it or not, even the best of us can find ourselves worried, depressed, um, very concerned. And so these psalms are psalms of encouragement. They were psalms that the pilgrim worshipers sang as they were going up to Jerusalem uh, to celebrate one of the three religious festivals of the Lord. They sang these songs on the way up. And so uh, the Lord moved on my heart to encourage our people and to those who are watching by preaching through these songs of the saints. So Psalms 123, I want to lift it for your hearing again, and I'll just keep you a few, few minutes if the Holy Spirit will allow me to Hold my peace. I'm so excited about what the Lord is going to say. 
To you, I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a servant maid servant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our souls has had more than enough of the scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the pride. I want to use as a title for my preaching this morning a very familiar title, Their Eyes Were Watching God. All right, all right. Their Eyes Were Watching God. All right. Perhaps you are already well aware that my title was borrowed from the 1937 novel of the same name written by that gifted poet writer Zora Neale Hurston. Their Eyes Were Watching God uh, is perhaps one of the finest pieces of literature ever written in these United States. In fact, in the year 2005, Time Magazine named it one of the most powerful and influential novels, 100 novels ever written in America. In Their Eyes Were Watching God, Zora Neale Hurston poised Janie Crawford, the protagonist, as she chronicles her life, as she spills her heart to her friend, Phoebe. Now this work is a framework of the intersectionality of black women. It also explores the, uh, the, the tension between the objectification of women and the masculinity of men. Their Eyes Were Watching God is about Jamie's self-discovery. It is about her liberation. It is about her independence. But that is not what caught my eye when I tagged this text, Their Eyes Were Watching God. As I read this text, I saw four times in the first three verses the word eyes, and I then realized the context of this psalm was the fact that these psalms, these psalms, these worshipers were in the, in the midst of a, a tribulation. They were in the midst of a discomforting circumstance and they knew that they had to depend on God to deliver them. So rather than to be distracted by what was going around them and what was happening to them, their eyes were watching God. All right, all right. Just like these worshipers, uh, Hurston's title comes from chapter 18, in which Jamie and her husband, Tea Cake, take shelter from the, a raging hurricane. Hurston writes that they waited to see how nature would determine their fate. And here is the line in chapter 18 where Zora Neale Hurston takes the title. She says, they seem to be staring in the dark, but their eyes were watching God. Mm -hmm. With this line, the character re recognized the lack of control they have over their own lives. And they realize that they can only be spared from the cruelty of nature if God sees fit to save them. Mm. My brothers and sisters, isn't that just like us? Yes, how yes. true it is, how true it is for believers, we often watch and see the work of God in the darkest places in our lives. That's right. That's so right. even though we are staring in the darkness, I want to say to you, our eyes are watching God. That's good. That's good. It is in the darkness where we realize best that we have absolutely no control over our lives. And if our lives are going to be saved from the ravaging winds and storms of life, it will be because God sees fit to save us. That's right. That's right. Just as Jamie and Tea Cake 
in Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God were a community of two in the midst of a hurricane, in the midst of darkness, this community of two had their eyes on God. This also, this Psalm 123, is what scholars call a communal, a communal lament. Mm. These folks are tired. Yeah. They yeah. are sick and tired yeah. of being badgered, of being beat upon, of having problem after problem, of being at the bottom of the well. They are tired of the rich and the powerful oppressing them and they cry out to God, Lord, we're going to keep our eyes on you until you grant us mercy. Mm. I want to talk about it because even in this time, there are those of us who don't know really what's going to happen tomorrow. We are in an unprecedented time where folks are being laid off from work and people yeah. are, are required to stay cooped up in the house and when you got money short and a lot of grown folks in the house, sometimes yeah. Yeah. this can present some very uncomfortable situations. That's right. For many of us, this COVID-19 era is not comfortable. For many of us, it's unfortunate. For many of us, it's dangerous. For the rest of us, our community, right where we are situated, we cannot afford to social distance because we have to take the chance of going out to get the things that are necessary for our welfare and to survive. So all we can say, Lord, our eyes are on you. That's good. That's good. Our eyes are watching God. We are watching God yeah. because God commands our attention. Here it is in verse 1. The writer says, I lift up my eyes to you, O Lord, because you are enthroned in the heavens. God commands our attention. He commands our attention because he is enthroned in the heavens. He has a beautiful and lofty place. In other words, God commands our attention because our God is an attractive God. Do I have any listeners? In other words, God mesmerizes us. Yes, yes. Now here it is. You can't see God. Uh, God is not man. He does not have a body like I have. But in the Bible, the, the, where the Bible writes, the biblical writers write about eyes metaphorically and figuratively, this also means insight and spiritual insight. For instance, some, uh, uh, Ephesians 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 18 writes, I pray that the eyes of my heart may be enlightened. Psalms 119, verse 18, the psalmist writes, Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of my law. Now, he is not talking about a physical sight, but a spiritual insight into who God is. All right. I want to declare to you, that God commands our attention because he is attractive. In other words, when, we, when you are really led by the Spirit and walking in, a, in the Spirit, you have the insight to know that we have a God that is mesmerized. Yes, he yes. is attractive. That's right. He is holy. He is majestic. Yeah. He's glorious. He's wonderful. He's beautiful. He is outstanding. That's right. Here it is, fellas. You know how it is. That wife, that 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 uh, babe that you have on your arm right now, you realize the first time you met her, when you saw her walk in that club or in that classroom or on that job when yeah. you saw her guess what it, guess what it, what it was it was love at first sight do I have any brothers here all right, all right. you couldn't keep your eyes off of her she commanded your attention yeah. that's how it is when we meet God all it right. is love at yeah. first sight yes, we can't keep our eyes off God yeah. in every sense he delivered us from sin and opened our eyes we only do I have any listeners? He's just that attractive. We are transfixed on this God that's holy and majestic and outstanding and merciful because he 
is so attractive that he commands our attention. I have some biblical writers who would attest. Isaiah said, when I behold the Lord, he was high and lifted up. Yes, yes. His train filled the temple. Yes, sir. And all the four seraphims could say when they saw him was holy, yes. holy, holy. Yes, the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Nebuchadnezzar yeah. saw how attractive he was as he peered into the midst of that burning fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar said, I thought we put three in there, but one is walking around like he is the son of God. Right. Paul saw him. Paul was taken up into the third heavens. And Paul writes, and I saw things that I cannot even put into words. Right. The centurion saw him on that cross. And he was so attracted, even with nails in his hands and a crown of thorns, that the centurion said, this must be the Son of God. Yes. He commands our attention because he's, a, he's attractive. All right. He commands our attention because he is in authority. Enthroned in this text also implies a position of authority. He commands our attention because he has the power to keep us from being distracted. I love the show Good Time. I grew up on Good Times. I grew up on uh, this show, Good Times, and many of you who are watching me and many of you who are sitting in this sanctuary, you are aware with Good Times. Almost every episode, J.J. and Thelma would go at it. J.J. Yeah. would talk about uh, Thelma. Thelma would jank J.J. and every now and then, Deacon Green, Lil Michael would get in. And, and things would get so out of control, Reverend Savage, that you couldn't hear anything. They would be at each other's throat. They would be fussing and arguing and hollering. But all of a sudden, James would come in the room. And all James would have to say is, hey, and everybody would stop. Yeah. My yeah. brothers and sisters, that's how authoritative our Lord is. When we have troubles all around us, right. when we have our enemies at yeah. our throat, yeah. when we feel that we cannot think straight for having somebody in our ear, we have a God that commands our attention, and all he has to say is, hey, yeah. and all yeah. of our problems have to That's cease. Right. Our enemies have to leave us alone. Our sickness has to cease. Our troubles have to cease. Because we have a God that he commands our attention. Mm, that's good. That's good. He is more powerful than anything you're going through right now. Yes, he is. Yes, you he don't is. have to be uh, 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 taken by your situation because the Lord is enthroned yeah. in the heavens. Yeah. But guess what? He commands our attention not only because he's attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, I only have eyes for him. I, I, I can't take my eyes off of him. He's not only, he not only commands our attention because he's authoritative, but guess what? He commands my attention, Quinn, because he's also attentive to me. Mm. I, I've been taught, and I also teach my boys that the ultimate side of respect is looking a person dead in his eye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you, it, it not only shows confidence, That's right. but it also conveys respect yeah. to the other person. That's right. It, it's been said that if you can't look a person in the eye, somebody is not being truthful. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that when I'm talking to my boys, I, I don't like them to be distracted with their phones. I don't like for them to be distracted with the PlayStation. I like them to give me attention because I'm giving them attention. That's right. And the reason that God commands our attention is because he has his eyes on us. Let me say it this way. All the right, reason right. their eyes was on God because they knew that God's eyes was on them. All right, Second all right. Chronicles 6, 3 and 9 says it this way, that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless toward him. Mm. First Peter 3 and 12 says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Yeah. Psalms 30 
very fall. Verse 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. Yeah. We yeah. serve a God whose eye is on us so our eyes should be watching. Yes. God. That's good. That's good, Pastor. God commands our attention. Yes. But guess what? Our eyes are on God. He unsaved. Because it's just wise mm -hmm. to pay attention to what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, not, not only do he, does he command our attention, uh -huh. but it's just wise to pay attention yeah. to what God is doing. Yeah. Listen to verse 2. Verse 2 says, Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, and the eyes of a maidservant, to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy upon us. All right. I like that. Yeah. Because I like this analogy because masters and mistresses are people who are also in positions of power. That's right. Now listen, because they are in these positions of power, they don't have to tell us what they are doing. But because we are dependent on them, it's just wise to keep our eyes on them. Mm. A slave is dependent on his master. A slave woman is dependent on her mistress. And so they better pay attention. Right. Here it is. Let me bring this in. Let me reel you in. Because some folks have asked me, Pastor, what is God doing in this pandemic? I've had another question posed to me. Uh, Brother Bostic, and that is, uh, uh, others have asked me, where is God in this pandemic? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I would be lying, my brothers and sisters, if I told you that I knew what God is doing. Yeah. Now, I know that there have been some sophisticated spiritual commentary going on uh, since we've all, uh, since we've had, uh, uh, since we've been in this state of downtime. I know some of the answers that people give you sound sophisticated and deep and yeah. spiritual. But if we are perfectly honest, we really don't know what God is doing. Talk about it. And it's, and it's all right for us to admit that we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But can I tell you something? Although I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. I'm going to keep on watching That's him. it. That's it. That's Although it. I don't know, I'm going to watch him. Although I don't know how this is going to turn out, yeah. I'm paying attention to God. That's because right. there are some times in our lives that we can't see him, but we better pay attention. We, ought to better, we better pay attention because what he is doing is going to be big. Yeah. What he is doing is yeah. going to be the best yeah. for you. Yeah. We may not know what he's up to, right. but pay attention to God. Yes. Keep your eyes on God yes, because what God is up to is big and is best for you. That's right. That's right. You're helping us, Pastor. My eyes are on God. Their eyes were watching God. Why were they watching God? Because they were paying attention. Because they knew that the God that they served, in the words of the Negro church, he may not come when you want him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he's always on time. That's right. They, they had to keep their eyes. They had to pay attention. And I'm, I'm trying to tell somebody here, you better pay attention to what God is doing. I, I know we get a lot of commentary from the CDC. I know there's a lot of news coming out of the White House. I know that CNN and MSNBC and Fox News is bombarding us. I know what your school is saying. I know what your governor and your mayor said. But you better pay attention to what God is saying. You better pay attention to what God is doing. Go on and get the information. But whatever you do, pay attention to what God is doing in your life. Don't That's use it. all of this downtime to be lazy and lax. Mm. Don't use all of this downtime to engage in arguments and, and, and worthless conversations. But take this time to spend a little time with God. Yes. 
so that you can get your life on track. That's right. So you can pay attention to what God is doing with you. You better watch God and pay attention to God. I'm closing now. Their eyes were watching God, not only because God commanded their attention. He was so attractive that they had to watch him. He's so majestic and so beautiful and so loving. I love the way uh, uh, Matthew 17 uh, records that transfiguration. Uh, the Bible says that when they were up on that Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John, they saw his face uh, shining and glowing like they never, he commanded their attention because he was so attractive. He commands our attention because he's authoritative and because he uh, gives attention to us. Yeah. Our eyes are watching him because we are paying attention to what he's doing. But lastly, as I go to my seat, our eyes are watching him because God is the only one who can get folks' attention. Yeah. Here it is, verse 3 and 4. The writer says, have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. But we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has had more than enough of scorn of those who are at ease of the contempt of the proud. Sounds like the, these people in this text who are being bullies upon the people of God. Sounds like the people in this text whom the psalm, the psalmist what was talking about sounds like they were proud and they they felt like they were too big for anybody. Sounds like they they thought they were untouchable. It sounds like that these folk thought they had immunity in the earth and immunity in the world. Sounds like they thought that they had a the the right to do folk any way that they wanted to. That they thought they could get away and say whatever they wanted to. Does that sound like anybody today? Yeah. Sounds like they could nobody could get their attention. But can I tell you, whoever it is that's on your trail, whoever it is that's bullying your life, God can get their attention. That's right. That's right. And the reason my eyes are watching God because I want to see. God get their attention. I want to watch. I want to have a front row seat yeah. to see God take them down a peg or two. I've had some enemies in my life that nothing I said or nothing I did seemed to get their attention. Come on, I've had some enemies in my life where it seemed as if I was powerless. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to be diplomatic. I tried to bargain. I tried to uh, plead. I tried to reason, but nothing that I said got their attention. COVID-19, some folks say that's what COVID-19 is. I don't know. Some say that COVID-19 is God's way of getting our attention. I don't know about that. But everybody, some people know what it's like to have somebody that just won't leave you alone. Somebody knows what it feels like to have somebody that's always picking on you. Maybe somebody is trapped in this quarantine situation and you're in an abusive relationship and you're just sick and tired. And I want to stick a pin right here to say to somebody that's watching, if you ain't doing right, you better start doing right. Yes. Yeah. Because you don't want God to get your attention. That's right. Don't have any this here. God will get their attention. And the reason that I'm going to keep watching God because the word says that he will make my enemies my footstool. Yeah. And I don't want to see that when he makes my enemies my footstool. All right. Do I have anybody here that knows that God can get the attention of every situation, of every person that won't leave you alone? Yeah. Oh, yes, I read where God got Pharaoh's attention. Oh, oh, Pharaoh kept on keeping God's people in bondage. Yeah. He kept on uh, subjugating them to slavery. He kept them in shackles, sign after sign. Nothing could get Pharaoh's attention. But oh, that last sign, when the, when the firstborn of everybody died in Egypt, God got somebody's attention. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was the most mighty man that walked the earth. But the Bible says that one time God 
to have him clawing the earth like a beast. Mm. Do I have any listeners? Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, Pilate thought he was the most mighty man in all of the earth. Uh -huh. But didn't the Lord get his attention? Yeah. Can I go on a little far? Yes, sir. Nobody had defeated that Roman cross. Talk about it. The cross got everybody's attention. Yes. But one Friday, God got the cross's attention. Yes, yeah. Do I have any of this here? Yes, the grave was an experience that no person has ever been able to escape. That's right. But the Lord got the grave's attention. Yeah. To yeah. where I hear Paul saying, Oh death, where is thou sin? Yeah. Oh grave, where is thy victory? Yeah. I want somebody to know today that whatever you got going on in your life, yeah. there comes a time when you're going to get sick and tired. Yeah. All you got to do is keep on watching God. Yeah. Keep on crying out to God. Yeah. Keep on praying to God. Yeah. And keep on depending on God. Yes, keep on trusting in God. Yeah. How many of you know that God will answer? Yes, he will come to your rescue. He will grant your praise. Yes, he, he will come and see about you. Yeah. He will give you mercy. Keep on watching God. God commands our attention. He commands our attention because he's so attractive. Yes. Yes. That, that is to suggest that your eyes ought not be watching God only when you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But this means that our eyes on God is a preconditioned response to his saving grace in our lives. There are some people that are only put their eyes on God. They are attracted or distract, distracted by things around them. My mind. But oh, how better all we would be mm -hmm. if the Holy One, the beautiful one who saved us, if we kept our eyes transfixed in worship in his beauty. The Spirit gives us insight to how majestic He is. The Spirit of God in us gives us a glimpse as much as we can process in this flesh of how grandeur, how majestic, how beautiful, how holy he is. I don't know about you. But a God this beautiful, we ought not be able to help but to stare at him. He's attractive. He commands our attention because he's authoritative. Since he has his eyes on me, since he cares so much about you, to watch you wherever you go. I want somebody to listen to me today because you are hurting. God sees it. He's not forgotten about you. He is watching you. He sees you. Any parent knows that every now and then your children can be in the other room fussing and arguing. And, and you can you can hear the, 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 the insults that they hurl at one another, but you can go on washing your dishes, washing your clothes. But as soon as it gets out of hand, you drop what you're doing and you go in the room and you say, y'all better get this thing together. That's how God is in your life. He won't let it get too close. So what you're going through is shaping you and molding you and making you and strengthening you. God is monitoring your situation. I know it seems simplistic, but it's so profound. He won't put more on you than you can bear. He will come to your rescue. He gives you the grace so when it's too heavy for you, his grace is sufficient. Our eyes are watching God because we, we ought to pay attention. 
attention to what God is doing. Don't miss what God is about to do. Don't miss what your life is far from being over. God is up to something. I don't know the way Henry Cloud put it in his book, Experiencing God. One of those steps Henry Cloud says that if you want to experience God, experience God, one of the things you need to do is find out what God is doing. That means pay attention. And then the next step is join him in what he's doing. So pay attention, church. Pay attention, listener. Pay attention to what God is doing. It's going, as Pastor Mike would say, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. But whatever he's, he's doing, it may not be uncomfortable. It may be uncomfortable right now. You may not know, but it's going to be what's best for you. So pay attention. Things may not be progressing the way you want them to on your football team, your volleyball team, your class work, your ministry. But you better pay attention. Don't miss the lesson. But God is going to get some people's attention. Don't you think that whoever is in the White House, who's ever in the State House, it may seem as if they have the authority right now. Listen to these writers. They're saying, Lord, we are tired of being scorned. We are tired of being in contempt of those who are at ease. You see, some people have a bully pulpit. They have a big stick. But God will get their attention. And I'm going to keep paying attention because I want to see when God gets their attention. Maybe you're watching right now and maybe you don't know this God in whom these worshipers were crying out to. Maybe you don't know him. When we continue to read the Bible, the Bible teaches us that there's only one way that we have access to that God. And that's through his son, Jesus Christ. There are a whole lot of faiths that offer a wealth of wisdom. But there's only one way to God, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ. So I invite you, wherever you are, in your kitchen, in your living room, in your dining room, in here, give your life to Christ. You can do that while watching this YouTube live, this Facebook live. You can do it right where you are. If you would just say, Lord, I am a sinner that needs to be saved, and I acknowledge that I cannot save myself. I acknowledge that it's not my good works. It's not my good deeds. That I cannot earn your salvation. But salvation is your gift to me, God. By faith, through grace. And if you will believe that, and I admit it's so beautiful. Without the grace of God, it's almost too good to be true. But that's why it's God. Because only God can do that. And Paul says it this way, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, confess him, believe that he died for our sins. That's, that's confessing him. Believe that he's Savior. Believe that he's God. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. No strings attached. My brothers and sisters, what a weight lifted off your shoulders. You don't have to quit. Keep trying to prove 
your worth. You don't have to keep trying to earn his love. You don't have to keep being on this roller coaster. To the utmost, Jesus said, if you believe that today, you're saved. And what we want to do, we want to pray with you. We want to walk you through this thing. We want to nurture you and help you develop. And all you have to do is shoot us a comment or inbox us, as uh, Reverend Sadness indicated earlier. Just give us your name and telephone number so that we can call you today to welcome you into the body of Christ. And we would love for you to be a member, if even right now an e-member of Plum Road Baptist Church. We love you. And we want you to keep on watching God. Join me in the benediction. Not unto us, O oh Lord, not unto us, but to your name we give glory. You are blessed of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You are blessed of the Lord, you and your children. Peace upon you, people of God. Shalom, blessings and wholeness, benefits, prosperity. In every sphere of your life, be upon you.